What's happening? What's happening? What's up? We'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Gangster Chronicles podcast. I am Big Steel with my guy. Yeah. Man, tonight, man, we have another legendary figure up in here, man, from the city of San Diego, man. Hit the scene big, man, with Triggeration Station, and it seemed like he'd been on a mission since then. Mixy Slick. Mixy, what's happening with you, baby? What's up, big homie? How you doing? Man, chillin', man. Glad you can come down here, man. This, especially in the rain, man. You don't, you don't have like a two-hour trek, man. Down here, man, from San Diego, man. Come see y'all, homie. That ain't nothing, homie. Yeah, it's raining like a motherfucker outside. For shit. sure, we appreciate you, man. The big you, homie said, "Pull up, I'm pulling up, shit. homie." Straight I'm, up. I'm, yeah. I'm right. I'm about shit. Fifty miles from where you down there. Oh, so that shit. right? Yeah, that's a ride. Yeah, eight right by you, dog. Y'all neighbors. Y'all be saying that shit, but. It, that's far. That's a far that's away. That's far as a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's far as a motherfucker. Hey, man, so you, man, in hip-hop, man, hip-hop is one of those um, careers, man, to where it's almost like the NFL. It's like the average lifespan, man, the average career of a rapper, man, is something like one and a half, two years, something like that mm. now, man. And you've managed to be um, getting busy since, what, since the 90s, right? Uh, I put my first album out in like 2001, two. Mm. Mm -hmm. 2002, Trigger Racing Station. You said you put that out with the homies, right? Strictly independent, homie. I, I, I'm talking about straight the the brown paper bag was my was my you know my label. Straight mm -hmm. up, yeah, it was just us. As a lot of people was back then, a lot of brothers got together, man. With, you know, street money, man, street currency and put their labels together, the distribution. We was talking about walled up the City Hall, Bayside, and all them all names. All that, them days, homie, them days. Yeah, if you had a little bit of paper, you could really get something cracking, man. You hit, I think, um, shoot, you hit the top 20 on Billboard with that album too, didn't you? Independent, yeah. Yeah, independent yeah. charts, like number 13, something like that. Yeah. 13 album in this country. I just bet that was we a nice-ass catch. We cooked it up catch. ourselves, homie. We cooked it up ourselves, promoted it ourselves, didn't know what the fuck we was doing. Just had a team of homies that was excited about actually being able to have a chance to be in the game after watching a, a lot of homies in surround, especially the LA homies, Compton homies do their thing. That was like, for the homies, that was like brand new shit. So we didn't know what we was doing, but we was we, we, we was happy about doing it. And we pretty much just word of mouth the project, you know? Yeah, you know, and sometimes that's the best strategy, bro. Yeah. That's the best strategy. Don't nothing beat the streets. Yeah, you had a um, word of mouth was real, uh, real official back in the days, you know. Uh, I guess, you know, trying to be an artist, you know, coming from the neighborhoods and whatever, uh, we saw all the the accolades of being on, you know, the LL Cool J's and the Run DMC's being on labels. Yeah. Um, so a lot of motherfuckers thought that was the way to go, but uh, a lot of motherfuckers was independent, you know, coming up. If, if you look at LA, you know, hip hop, a lot of the uh, forefathers, you know, started off independently. The Toddy T's, the Wrecking Crews, mm -hmm. Easy started off. We don't off know that history, homie, but yeah. we'd love to know it, though. That's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, L.A. artists started off, like, independent. Yeah, y'all was on Compton's Most Wanted was on the independent We was on label. Techno Hop, uh, King T, Ice T was on Techno Hop. Yeah. Um, uh, Lonzo had Crew Cut, which was the Wrecking Crew, which was Dre and them, you know. Um, Easy had Ruthless. Um, we was, shit, we was kind of born and bred on independency coming up in, in the early 80s and shit as, as far as hip hop concerned. Because labels wasn't fucking with. Well, that's our what I was going to say. Shit. Especially when it came to our side, you know Yanks. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, What's up? Yeah, that. You know, they, like I said, it was a, the Run DMCs, the Houdinis, the, the shit like that. So, uh, but when it came to West Coast music, uh, it was kind of venturing into another side for them. So, mm -hmm. they was, they was treacher, they was terrified of niggas like us, especially grabbing the microphone. Um, 
you know, watching movies like Colors and shit compared to like the Warriors and shit. Uh, you compared the Warriors to Colors and shit. It was a whole different uh, stabbing and shooting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, That's it, the difference between yeah. stabbings and yeah. 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 shootings and it's slaughters. Shit. Warriors was like some cartoon yeah. shit. They had right. niggas out there on skates and all kind of shit. Was like, shit. what the fuck is these niggas do? So it kind of terrified uh, record labels from fucking with niggas like us until it just started being too lucrative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they had to. And, and you know, you being, you had two things, bro. You was from San Diego. And I think at that time, the only person that people had heard of that had some notoriety was jail, right? And at that time, it wasn't that many bloods in the business. It wasn't no bloods. It wasn't no was, bloods. You, you I mean, know, you had the DJ Quick. around, but when I first started coming to LA, Man, you gotta, man, look, hey, listen, man. Yeah. I mean, you was at the time when people was really banging. Listen on me. I'm gonna tell you one experience, and I don't know if being from Compton or LA, y'all really can understand what this is like, homie. But imagine, I, I gotta explain to you. Imagine in LA, if a gang like East Coast of the 60s was Bloods. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how deep that is mm -hmm. in the landscape of, even though it ain't as many niggas mm -hmm. to scale, that's kind of how San Diego was. That don't mean that you don't worry about bloods in LA just because the Crips is deep, or you don't worry about, you know, it ain't that it was so few Crips that, nah, nigga, Crips was active as a motherfucker in San Diego. Mm -hmm. You ain't safe, nigga, out here too much, but just to be coming from a city like that, and then my first L.A. trip to L.A., the first day I went out to L.A. to get out and do my shit with Jinx, this nigga take me to that um, that, that, that summer gym where the, where the niggas went. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first that experience? That was my first day in L.A. For those with the L.A. The first day I went around L.A. niggas was at that summer gym. And that's nigga, I've never crazy. seen. Is that when they snatched Biggie and them off stage? No, nah, nigga, that's when it was about 500 Crips, nigga, in one pack, nigga, moving around, oh, nigga. Yeah, you talking about the, and, they, uh, and they got it, and, and the, F and the FOI had to stand off with them, and they oh, got yeah. on the, the Damu homies, and they ran up on stage, and LL was on stage, and mm -hmm. nigga, that's the first day I went to LA. I was like, all right, homie, we, we gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta recalculate. How we move in LA, and I and I started learning how to move in LA, cause at that time, homie, every every rap circle, it was basically that hood. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it it wasn't like no. I mean, you had Death Row or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Where it was different niggas, but for the most part, if you rap with Eight and M, you in Compton with the Crips. Mm -hmm. If you rap with Mac Ten, you in Inglewood with mm -hmm. the Club. If you rap with Quick, you you know you would. And Compton with the tree so top So to be a San Diego nigga and just come to LA, where I'm a, you know? And yeah. so the niggas that kind of opened up their arms to me, homie, was niggas that wasn't really um, gang members. Right. Mm -hmm. Artists. So that'd be like the alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what you I was gonna say. You always had- the Alcoholics, uh, that's how I met crime and feeling all them from being in the arena of niggas that was just about rapping, homie, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's what I was gonna say. You had a lot of love, as crazy as it is. You was a gangster rapper, but you had a lot of love from the underground cats. That's from that. That's from me. Yeah, because at that years. time, Exhibit people. I think people seem to forget that Exhibit had a whole career before he was with Dre. Right. You know, because King T had put him on, and they was just the homies. They was just the rapping niggas. You know what I mean? It wasn't really no gang, you know, the alcoholics. They, they, they was the crew. They yeah, was the really. crew. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You didn't look at them as gang bangers like that, but when you saw, like, CMW, you knew them some Crips. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? When you saw Quick and them, you knew them the Pyru homies. And when you saw, you know, whoever else, you knew where they was from. You know the Snoop and them Snoop was from 20s and Long Beach. You pretty much knew everybody's gang affiliation. But them was the cats, Raz, Kaz, and Exhibit Raz, and all them. Saphir, them was like Barbershop the, MCs. I like to call them the, um, what was my boy Sway in the Wake Up Show cats. Hey, I, them niggas, listen, I mean, my first, one of my first trips to L.A., these niggas take me to the Wake Up Show. Hey, they got me on the Wake Up Show busing. I don't even know who these niggas is. I'm just thinking we rapping this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nigga, I'm on the Wake Up Show. But the Wake Up Show is And it's documented me, like Mr. Fab. Mm -hmm. I was so green to the to the shit, but I that's the only place and I could had to get have in some, at the time. And you had to have some bars up there for Sway and Tech, because they had to have some up there up rapping show. forever. I didn't even know it, homie. 
just thought I was rapping. Just okay, that's, the, that's what that, I got to do. That's the beauty of 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 uh, like you said when you being when you're able to come into the shit without the gang affiliation and niggas just trying to hear you on some rap shit. Yeah. I mean, because. I was on just hip hop shit. Oh, you I get know. me. Um, I know. I wasn't uh, trying to uh, be associated as far as my music was the concerned. First songs was hip hop out. Yeah, well, I, that I, that I, time, I was, was hip hop, man. Um, at that the, time, the, the, the vocabulary that you was using was even hip hop vocabulary. Felt, I just, you know, because nigga was already doing the hood shit, and and like I said, a lot of a lot of. Uh, a lot of my heroes was from the East Coast. You get me? Um, I grew up listening to LL and Cool Mo D and, and, and those dudes. And so when you're able to listen to them just focus on hip hop, it was able to keep me away from the gang affiliation in my music. You get me? Um, that part was just because a nigga was banging already. You get me? I'm a I, I'm, nigga. It wasn't about trying to image, nigga. Khakis was cheap. You get me? Right up. T-shirts was cheap. Uh, na- uh, fucking Cortez was cheap. So Niggas that was all. That, that was all apparel. You yeah. get me? And especially when you ain't got moms or dad buying your clothes, and you already walking around fourteen, fifteen affiliated, right nigga. I don't give a fuck about rapping or nothing, nigga. The attire is finna be. A sweatshirt, and khakis, and motherfucking Cortez. And I would say at that time, two eight, what nobody really because gang banging was so serious at that time. What no, everybody knew we could really kick off. So you didn't really hear people talking about their neighborhoods on records like I that. Ne- you never know where a nigga was even from. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't want to do. Um, I didn't want to do color shit on the records because. I wanted to talk about every nigga that was gang banging, right? Um, I didn't. I didn't just go fuck that. I'm just gonna focus on the crip niggas. Um, I knew blood homies was banging my shit too, so I didn't want to alienate them. by going, man, all this nigga talking about is crip this, crip that, crip that, crip that. So, I we didn't do that. We just was like, in the neighborhood, this would go down. In the neighborhood, this would go down. I know in my neighborhood it go down, so it got to go down in your neighborhood. So we as Compton's Most Wanted never focused on like, you know, we was like, nigga, we, been, we already there with that. So mm-hmm. we, trying to, we trying to capture some of that worldwide shit right now. And you can't... Uh, you can't alienate. I learned that shit, man. You can't just alienate motherfuckers because... Everybody was coming to the shows. Mm-hmm. And I go out in the audience, nigga, it was Crips, it was Bloods, it was Mexicans, it was it was everything. It was everybody. So and like, y'all had a blood, y'all had a blood, homie, in the in Mike the T was, was a blood. He was from Inglewood. Never knew that, Yeah, homie. Mike T was from Inglewood. learned some stuff today, yeah. though. I already knew. That's what I came for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike T was from Inglewood. Check it out. But what fucked me up is, we gonna, I know we gonna get to this part of the shit, but when we do, we gonna have to come back to, to hear him say everything that he said and, and for that to be so much my understanding of how I was going to make music, you'll understand why that's so important to me later on that he said this, you know what I'm saying, in mm-hmm. a minute. But, like, that's the same approach I had, homie. I wanted, I didn't want, I, this is what I used to say, I want niggas to be able to bump my shit at a crib picnic. Exactly. Because, you know, if you're saying certain shit, they're not going to play your shit. No, they're not. They're not going to do it. Just the, and I didn't say blood one time on my on Trigger Ratchet Station, my nigga. Mm-hmm. Not one time on the whole album. On the whole album, it was just say, a dope yeah, album. I didn't say blood one time. And they oh, that's the most gangster shit. Yeah, nigga, I didn't, it's a bunch of shit. I didn't even really cuss that much on the album. Mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. to be able to slap my shit, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere, and it worked for you. Yeah, yeah. And let me add, because you spent some time in Texas, right? Mm-hmm. You was down in Prairie View. You was playing football. I didn't, I didn't play football at Prairie View. I played football because I went down there two different times. I went down there in high school. I was fucking up in San Diego. And um, at the time, I was playing quarterback for Lincoln. Mm-hmm. It got into some shit with a you know, young. It was legendary scrap between me and one of the young reputable San Diego niggas. Uh, shout out to the homie Papa, homie from... From uh, from Skyline, homie, the homie got life right now. But shout out to the homie. You know, I always give shout out to the niggas I ran into along the way because they helped make me who I am today. You feel me? Mm-hmm. 
It was a big rumble. Moms found out, and that's when I kind of got a, uh, you know, it was kind of out there. A nigga was doing his shit outside, and mom sent my ass to Texas, homie. I was in the 10th grade, and she was like, nigga, you, you, you doing too much, homie. Yeah, she was trying to save your life. She was like, you doing too much, my nigga. Mm -hmm. And I told a story before, but it's such a good one. I got to tell it. That's what I do. I tell stories, homie. For sure. So mom's just like, she in her mind, she like, my nigga finna start this gang bang and shit. I'm finna get him out of here before. Nigga been already active since the fucking the, the mm -hmm. elementary, exactly. but mm -hmm. she get me out of there, right? Send me to my auntie house. Really, it's my, 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 my mama's cousin. They grew up like sisters in Lubbock, Texas. I fly down there. I get off the uh, plane. I hop in the car with her. She take me home. I'm trying to get away from this shit. Right in her neighborhood, my mom and them grew up with. It's a park up there. It's a, I think it's, a, it's by Dunbar High School. We coming home. When we come into the pad, nigga, it's about 30 Crips up at the park having initiation in the neighborhood mm. in Texas in like 92, 91, 92. Mm -hmm. The 30s was out there. At like the Denver Lanes and the 30s was out in Texas, Lubbock, Texas in like 92. And them niggas was active. Mm -hmm. Them niggas was, they was so excited about that yeah, gang banging shit. Yes, I was indeed. like, damn. Moms to see me out here, I'm right in the middle of this shit. And all the crypt little niggas in my neighborhood was kind of watching me on how to, you know, do the gang gangster shit. So they didn't trip off me because it was just me and they was deep as a motherfucker. But yeah, mom sent me to Texas. That was the first time. And then after I finished high school and all that shit, I went down there a second time and I went to Prairie View. That's when I went to Prairie View. You went to Prairie View? What made you want to go down to the Prairie View? Well, what it was, homie, is, um, I always be hating explaining this part too, but I ha for y'all to understand my story is what y'all should want to do if y'all watching this shit. Mm -hmm. Is I always tell this part of the story, but I don't want nobody to get it mixed up like I'm glorifying being a street nigga and not going to college. But I understand and I know that any nigga I ever know that went to a HBCU, mm -hmm. he was different than how I am. So I tell niggas for y'all to understand the magnitude of me going to college. I'm not nigga. I'm like not like no nigga that you ever knew that went off to college at the time. Nigga, I'm straight number one. Shot the you know what I'm saying front number one guy in the turf before I went off to motherfucker. It was it was it was some shit, homie. It was the best experience I ever had in my life. But I really was not no nigga that was on his way to college. So I say that so y'all don't misunderstand who Mitchy Slicky is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm an intelligent nigga. I think I, and I, I wish I would have stayed in school and did all that shit, but I'm not a nigga that y'all would have ever had imagined and the shit I was doing to end up leaving off to going to college. But I did that shit, I mean, it, it, I learned a lot of shit, opened up my eyes a lot of shit, and um, let me know that, um, it let me know about being considerate of other shit in the world because the shit I thought was the shit, mm. It, 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 it didn't mean shit down there. And when I got there, it was shit that we didn't give a fuck about here that meant everything out there. Like like, like, like fraternities and sororities, mm -hmm. the magnitude that they have on the mm -hmm. South and all that shit, we don't do that out here. We don't even understand that. Nigga, you damn near couldn't get a bitch if you wasn't from some shit out there, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. If, you ain't, if you ain't a Kappa, if you ain't a yeah, Q dog, you ain't strong, They real strong on shit down in the South. I mean, yeah. not to say we don't got our values as right. far as being, um, I think every, you know, nigga that come from our walks of life, mm -hmm. especially from that time yeah. era, because it's kind of different now, you know what I'm That's saying? Definitely. Um, a lot of niggas who came from that time era, we had some sort of, you know, respect and honor about the shit. Even though motherfuckers looked at us as gang banging and whatever you had it, we just had a different way uh, of, of how shit is. Like you said, uh, you go down there, they real heavy with the sororities and all of that. Well, that's how we took being from the neighborhood. Exactly. We had real respect back then and pride about it. And um, it's just kind of different now, you know what I'm saying? A Kappa, I'm surprised you ain't become a Kappa down there. Nah, see, I, I I didn't really fall in. I was the one Cali nigga with the khakis and the chucks on just at school, kind of by myself. I didn't really fall into mingling with all the social shit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But a few niggas that was down there, I dealt with them. You hung out with the homies, got money down there with a couple niggas too while I was down there and shit. That's what I actually went for. I was fucking up at home. And mom's basically was like, look, homie, you done graduated from high school. You ain't going to school right now. You ain't working right now. 
I'm full fledged, Jade. I'm outside. I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm they, low riding it. They, try, they try to, <laughs> and the moms is gonna always pretend like you know they hear and they see little shit. Yeah. But they still gonna ride it down to the last. Like yeah, they try to. She tried to. I, I got to steer you. I but you already like full fledged, a hundred percent outside. Um. They kind of know it, but they don't want to, so they still try to them last efforts to uh, they gotta get you it. out of this yeah, shit. Yeah, moms will always try to make sure her baby, you got to remember, they don't walk around for a whole year with you living inside their ass. I, mean, I used to mean? come to the crib, nigga. Homies used to drop me off, low riders in the front, niggas jumping out five and six deep, um, you know, and and <laughs> we used to have beef with where, where a nigga lived at, so it was always some hesitation and some friction, and moms used to just, oh, no, he don't gangbang. Mm. My son on gang bang. Yeah. Now I used to walk in the house with fucking coats and shit hit up with the hood <laughs> all on the back of them and sweatshirts and belt buckles with the hood on them and every and my she see pictures all in the nigga room and took she in the still, hood. She still the denial. My son don't gang bang. That's right. My son, you he know, ain't never told me he gang bang. Yeah, they they protect you to the fullest, man, to the end of the line and shit. Ma told me, look, you 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 ain't you you ain't working. You ain't going to school. You gonna do. You got to do one or the other. And at the time, my, one of my best homies had just recently got killed, and niggas was niggas went crazy. And for six months was passed after he died, all the homies was in jail, and it was still on homie. And I'm kind of really just out in Dago by myself, really without the homies and the other side. And I was like, what the fuck I'm gonna do, homie? I ain't finna be sitting up in no job every day in exactly. Dago. A nigga fuck around and um, applied to a couple schools, homie, and Prayer View accepted me. My whole family had went to Prayer View before me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My mama, my daddy, my grandparents, my uncles, all that shit went there. That's what Primo people uh, Yeah, Primo. Went As a matter Prayer of fact, View. Primo got a nephew, Primo and them from, from Prayer View, and mm -hmm. he got a nephew um, that's, that produced on my um, new album. Primo got it. He produced okay. a lot of my shit right now, man. Yeah, his people, his moms and pops and all of that, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Oh, so you fuck with Primo real heavy? Primo the homie, but but I know that he fuck with the homie real heavy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of figured his relationship with Eight when he fuck with Slick because I didn't did shit and hopped on shit. I figured he feel like kind of like a Slick, kind of like a new era eight far as in his fucking around because he don't fuck with a bunch of oh, gangster no, rap no. niggas, but he fuck with Slick and he fuck with you. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been knowing Primo yeah. since, man. We well, first Primo, got started. Well, Primo, we need to get that MC8 Mixy Slick collab man, up in this motherfucker pr produced crazy. by DJ Premier. We need that, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Primo's one of them cats, man. I've been knowing since my 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 first start. Oh, um, yeah. So he's one of those dudes who I can I still talk to today. Not even on rap shit, man. Um, I talk to Premier about family shit and all of that, you know. So uh, shout out my people's Premier. Him and him and Face is like uh, two people that uh, I've been knowing for a man. Since I first started rapping and shit, you know. I never met Face. Um. I just talked to Face. Um, he called me about four days ago. He'd be out here uh, at the end of this month. Yeah, Face stay on that road. He's on, the, he's on that, uh, <clears throat> he decided to go back on tour, you know, like his final roundup. Mm -hmm. So um, he's doing dates right now. He's going to be in Santa Ana. At the garden app. Yeah, read performing. something like that. Uh huh. Hey, salute to Sly Drexler, man. That's the homie Primo's nephew, DJ Premier nephew from out there. Oh, okay, he, for he, sure. He, 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 he a dope ass producer. Nigga down there, like, make some West Coast shit. And that nigga from, from Prairie View. See, oh, yeah. He hard. So you down in Prairie View, Texas. Yeah. You, you getting it in. You just staying low key. You getting your little money here. You getting to it, but you kind of staying low key. I'm staying low key for sure. Yeah, I'm just observing everything. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. It's the first time ever I really start going to class for real and, you know, going to the library. And it, it kind of fucked me up because I wasn't even on my woke type shit at the time. I be trying to be on it now about, you know, the mm -hmm. world and, and mm -hmm. all my peoples and all that. But at the time, I was just a young, burnt nigga fresh off the trap. You know what I'm saying? But all that, all those experiences made you who you are now, later. When I, I'm going to class and I'm hearing these black teachers teach me history, 
But when they teaching me history, it ain't like I done heard it all through high school. They teaching me history and they telling me what my peoples is doing during the same time that George Washington is doing whatever he doing or whatever mm -hmm. the same time they making an emancipation proclamation with the white folks do. That's what they tell you in the books, but they don't really tell you what the black folks was doing because they was doing shit all while these great yeah. events is happening in, in uh, American history, mm -hmm. but we never learned what we was doing during them times. And when I went to Prayer View, they was teaching us that. Part Man, two. I wanted to go they, to the HBCU. Yeah, band. they was the teaching. Yeah. They was teaching us how we was slaves. Ain't you that the crazy shit? And they was teaching. And they was teaching us how we was doing else. politics was, and all was, that shit. We was just being taught That's about uh, being slaves, or they might give you one every now and then. That's and, all you heard were ways on how you're not superior, and just pretty much to degrade you. The whole time, that's what I felt like um, American history was when I was in you know, high school and stuff, mm -hmm. because I took it upon myself to go learn certain things, and I was like you, once I went to college, I learned even further, I expounded on that. But for the most part, it's there almost like, it's almost like a form of bug breaking to be a little bit Mentally. like, like, like to Mentally, remind though. you, you know what? Your big strong daddy, we once had them tied up. <laughs> That's a fucked ass, up So you want to stay in line. It's almost like a, you're a subliminal you're shit. You're fucking kid in elementary and mm -hmm. they want to te teach you about how, well, you was a slave and you got brought over here as a slave and then you get to see in movies how you used to get whipped and, mm -hmm. and, and chased after and all kind of then shit. Then the one niggas that did stand up for y'all got smoked and shit, yeah. so don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to stand up. You're going to get blue down like, you feel me? It's the biggest form of bug breaking, yeah, dog. That's I mean. what it is. It's very, it's very systematic, man, the way they do stuff and the way they oppress people, right? Because if you get told your whole life that all you've been is a slave and you wasn't shit then and you ain't shit now, what you think you going to grow up and do? Mm -hmm. I had a teacher tell me straight up in elementary school, a white dude told me, he said, I don't even know why you try. Why are you all right? Why aren't you all right? And it was so yeah, fucked up. I ain't never had that. It was so fucked up, man. He just looked at your big ass and was like, man, why are you even here, man? Go outside and get a ball and shit. And we, we go, we go pass you right through school and shit. And it was just, you know, you hear those things when you were a child, man, and it has an, imp it has an impact on you. Most definitely. It definitely impact you. So you down there, man, how, how long did that last, man? Bro, I went down there for like a year, homie. And while I was down there, a nigga got caught up trying to get to the bag. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever went to jail, my nigga, I was in college, my nigga. I knew something was coming. I you said, well, yeah, I said, what happened? I was down there trying to get to it, homie. It's, it's, it's a long story, but I don't feel like going into that shit. Fuck it. Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make it quick. I'm going to say it fast than the motherfucker. It was one of them weekends, homie, where... I guess it was a game, probably our school against Southern or somebody like that. All the kids come in from all over Texas. Some little broad had fucking around and came and didn't go home. 16 years old, came and didn't go mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. All right, so they all over the campus looking for her. Mama calling down from wherever the fuck they looking for. Okay, now, I don't know nothing about where this bitch is at or no shit like that. Anyways, all I know is one day, nigga, they got the dolls coming through the dorms. Mm -hmm. When they bring the dolls to the dorms, that's either if they finna come raid right a room or they just do random checks. Niggas up in my room, I got the, the screens and shit in the room. You know, I've been getting to the bag up at school. I got niggas in there playing PlayStation or whatever and shit. And the motherfucking dorm director come to my room with the dogs, homie. And, and it was smelling like weed and shit up in there, homie. Oh, and, well, man, you in Texas, too. Come on, my nigga. I'm in a fucking black college and my room smell like weed. And everybody run to the other side, leave me in there. I'm like, all right, fuck it. But what had happened was the little broad was up in this other nigga room around the corner and I guess she was fucking with the nigga across the hall from me and these niggas knew what was going on. So when they went to his room, he hid her in the closet and he said, I don't know where she at. I think she in room. Mm. Guess whose room he said? Yours. My room. Mm. And they came to my motherfucking room, found the weed, the little girl get out and go wherever she go. Everybody good, homie, and I go to jail for the first time I ever went to jail at motherfucking college when I'm just starting to kind of change and try to get they my shit They put you in jail together. behind some weed? Yeah. Oh yeah, Texas don't play when it comes. Yeah, when to it comes to weed and shit. And what year was that? That's in, we talk about like 90, 95. Or oh man. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, ninety five for sure. 
They was looking next your ass like they you was Pablo Escobar. when they come to the motherfucking like, weed. They, they looking next your ass for some weed. They like, that's Pablo Escobar right there. Shit. Shit. This nigga was bringing all the dope in the city. had a nickel bag of stress and shit. Hey, motherfucking man. Texas, they throw they your ass under the motherfucking bro. jail. That was it, nigga. No more college for you. And on everything I love, that nigga, that motherfucker summer, that was the wildest summer I ever had in the streets of my life. Right after I came home from college, nigga came right back to the block and went hammer time. Straight up. Yeah, that, 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 that that's probably the, one of the most fucked up things that happened now, now in I my saw, life's pattern. Yeah, in the summer. No, after, after getting sent home from college. So you do your you do your time down there, man. You come back home. When did the music bug hit? What did you say, man? I'm kind of nice on this microphone. Um, I always felt I was nice on the mic, but I never really took doing music serious mm -hmm. because I never really saw. It is a reality that it can happen. See, in San Diego, you never seen no nigga make it off rap. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So rap wasn't, that wasn't even something that we did like that. You know so what I'm saying? So you and J.O. kind of like first generation? No, 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 no. No, it was other us. niggas before. It niggas yeah. Before us. yeah. It's a couple, yeah, before mm -hmm. us. Right before us was going to be like, the main name was going to be like a uh, 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 homie from, from Brims, from Dago Brims named Gangsta Earn. Gangster Earn, that's Gangster right. We were talking Earn. about Gangster Earn earlier. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I can't, you know what? I, I can't even say I knew Gangster Earn was a rapper. I would no more know him from the street shit as being a legendary nigga from down in San Diego. Tell you the truth, Gangster Earn probably more known for the street shit than the rap shit. Well, in Dago, he more known for the street shit. Yeah, because I know Lil Earn is nice. Lil Earn do his thing. Mm. But Gangsta Earn, I just more knew him as just one of the G, you know, the niggas got the right. perms down there and shit. I just knew him as one of them niggas. Yeah, Gangsta Earn was official in the streets and he, he kind of showed niggas that you could actually do this for real. He was the first nigga we saw that was a, just a regular street nigga, not no rapper, just a street nigga that took his money and put out records, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what, what started everybody up on being like really into to, um, our, our, our street independent music right there. And, it, it, and niggas didn't jump right on after that. It was a few years after niggas got on. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, it, it was niggas before me. Before J.O., for sure. You know what I shouldn't, I think, who was the first ones to take it like on the nationwide scale? Let me see, Nation, it's Dago, homie. I mean, we ain't really had nobody take it on no nationwide scale. Well, you know scale. what, you had J.O. did his thing. No, J.O. was, the, thing. J -O was the first nigga in, in, in the era that actually had records that was like on the radio and, right. and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Nick Cannon had records, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's, you know what I forget, that Nick Cannon is from Nick, San Diego. Nick, Nick Cannon had records and mm -hmm. shit like that, but but far as just on some straight competitive shit where you hearing this shit and then you hearing the homie shit come on after that or something like that, J.O. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't really get on till long after J.O. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you came. I wasn't even rapping when J.O. put out that first, you know, stuff he had put out. What you say? Damn, J.O. and G in that shit. Um, what, what, what year? I, man, I don't even know J.O. You, well, you and A kind of like, you and J.O. kind of from the same class as no. you before. No, I came way before J.O. Yeah, I came. When the Sherm stick dropped. That was like in the nineties, man. I start. I mean, uh, yeah, you go that was like the mid nineties, like maybe the end, something like that. Yeah, I came out like uh, Contest Most Wanted. Contest Most 90. Wanted came out in eighty nine, ninety nine, ninety nine, ninety. Yeah, man. And see, it's these stories, man. It's that history, man. All this shit is it's so much history to this shit. That's why having brothers like you on the show is important because for a lot of people, they. There's a lot of people that may not even know who Gangsta Earn is. I mean, you know, Gangsta Earn really didn't get to, Gangsta Earn passed away before he really got his full issue of getting out, you know what I'm saying, like that. But, but like, real budget and all that shit, it's gonna be jail. Mm -hmm. Jail, you know, jail shit had, shit. Jail had hit records with, nigga was rapping with fucking uh, the biggest niggas in the game and shit, you mm -hmm. feel me? Exactly. At the time. Yeah. Nigga had jail. a song with Method Man and, and, um, and uh, who was, who was, no, who, Jam Master J, uh, the, I was I was kind of shocked myself to see a nigga from San Diego uh, riding with uh, you know Jam Master J's label and all that. I was like, how the fuck did that happen? You know, yeah, man. Because sometimes you you know, as an artist, you you know, you uh, 
you quest to fuck with certain niggas, you know what I'm saying? And to be able to be on the coattails of of history makers and this mm. shit. Um, Damn, that, that, that was like, like that was J.O. Like, was all raps. Hmm? J.O. got what he was, because J.O. was rapping. Uh, J.O. was a rapper. Rap <laughs> Let me tell you Wherever something. Wherever that nigga quick. got it was off raps. Yeah, yeah I was very go, impressed by the, mm-hmm. by, the, by, the, by the lyrical skills. And we not go, well, we not go gone, because we got, this is a Mixie Slick show mm-hmm. today. But J.O., I'm going to tell you this. He's a rapping-ass nigga. I saw J.O. felony light 20 niggas up in Compton one day. Like, on some rap, like, I'm being for real. Uh, we, the homie Big A had a um, record store called Underworld Records in Compton. Mm-hmm. And he used to bring the stage out there in the parking lot. So he had, a, like, Big A was always the nigga. He had the hot boys come through there. So he got J.O. up there. It's about 100 niggas outside. You know, a bunch of little rapping niggas. And so J.O. up there doing this one, two year up there doing this shit. You know J.O. is a real high strung nigga anyway. He look in the audience like this and say, oh, y'all little niggas rap? Who out here think they can rap? Bring y'all up here, I'ma fuck y'all up real quick. See? Niggas yeah. one by one, dog, and niggas was getting shut down, dog. I'm talking about, there was some niggas out there that can rap. Right. And he was just shutting these motherfuckers down like, like dominoes, my nigga, bing, 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 bing. Oh. And it was just like this, and I said, that's a rapping ass nigga right there. Oh yeah. And it was all on some freestyle shit, like them niggas could be, wasn't even in this range, but we gonna come on back to you, all right? So you doing your thing in San Diego, man, and you starting to come up to L.A. now, you starting to creep up there. Mm-hmm, you creep, I'm creeping. What kind of reception was you getting at first, dog? You know what? I think niggas kind of knew that I was, that I was, um, that I was more than just some blood nigga from Dago. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't moving like like that. I know how to respect niggas and I knew where I was at. And a lot of times, you know what I think got me a lot of over being in LA? Hey, I used to be by myself a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to come with a lot of niggas sometimes, but other times I'd be by myself. So what you do when you come by yourself is, for one, you ain't no threat. And then for two, niggas will let you in some places they might not let you and your homeboys in. They don't right. know them. They know you. Mm-hmm. And the motherfucker might be like, oh, slick out by yourself. Come, they're going to bring you extra just to right. not leave you out. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that's what I felt. I, I learned work for me being in L.A. And I built my, my relationships with, with niggas just on regular nigga shit, not on rap shit. Mm-hmm. And you hanging saying? out with Feel the Agony, you Come on, kicking man. it with Crime Down yeah, and all man, of them, man. Yeah, man, spent a lot of time together them first years, man. Mm-hmm. I'm and over there, we really over there in the Mansfields. And I'm walking, I walk around the Mansfields, go to the store, the shop. I fuck with all them little niggas over there at the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I be dolo. And even at times, I even had the homies. I had the homies fucking with them niggas over there. Dago Bloods fucking with homies over there. They all show love because... When they would come to Dago, I would show them love. Exactly. You feel me? Yeah, respect carry you a long way, bro. Mm-hmm. Respect definitely carry you a long way. Mm-hmm. So you doing your thing, man, and you down here, and you was actually selling records, like I said, you were hit, you was hitting the billboard charts and there and that, and um, you stayed independent for a long time. Yeah, I'm still, I ain't never wasn't independent. <laughs> and never wasn't independent. Oh, you know what? When y'all did the deal, we, we gonna get to that in a minute. Right, right, right. I'll show you how that go, go ahead. Yeah, actually, so to it. you doing your thing, you selling records, not one of these labels ever came and hollered at you like, hey man, you know what you it is, some man? units? I had, me- I had meetings with a few motherfuckers, bro, but what I never had is I didn't have the business. I didn't have nobody that understood the verbiage and how, 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 how the unification of an artist and the label. It ain't never the artist talking to the goddamn label himself. No. I never had no man in, in the middle that knew, you know, they, they don't know me. I'm a, some little burnt ass California have, nigga that's going to go buy guns with his advancement usually, and shit. And there usually, was nobody in the middle. There was no one so representing you, me. I never had so a man. Most of the no, time, the middle motherfucker going to try to fuck you anyway. Yeah, they going to do some yeah, shit. Yeah, because they working so. with the label, and that's exactly. the reason why they going to give up the deal anyway. They ain't going to just give this little nigga that bread. And I was kind of like, like I used to look at the shit that would come up when a nigga would Google me. Like it used to be the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I thought, like, you know, the 50 Cent area, he gets shot 10 times and now he on. And you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking the realer you is, the more. But shit, nigga, too real that nigga, they be, they don't want to fuck with that. Especially not me directly. 
Mm-hmm. If it had been somebody, a middleman to represent for me, if I would, when I went to go do songs with, 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 uh, with, uh, you know, Short, Game, Wayne, Lil Wayne, whoever I did songs with, mm-hmm. there was no point man talking to the, his manager. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It was just a me, because niggas just fucked with me off of being a cool nigga that they know that's a real nigga from the streets. Mm-hmm. And that's, the business never was there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never had that, homie, so. Yeah, you know what? It seemed like um, shit. Warner Brothers hollered. You know what I'm saying? A couple labels hollered at the time, but it never was no really like how these niggas be getting these deals and money now and all that shit. I be like, oh yeah, fuck? definitely. It's these way niggas just different. Be, everybody you know, be getting a little bad. It's mm-hmm. one of those things I've always thought that major labels, because that's kind of how I got my job. Major labels love plausible deniability. Mm. If they can have somebody in the middle. Yeah. For them, they they let them run the ball, play, and do whatever. Right. So the minute that nigga go out there and shoot somebody or choke somebody out or pistol whip somebody, they can disassociate they can themselves. Disassociate. Yeah. Oh, that's not us. He signed to sex and sex, mm. and they can just let him go. But they don't ever want to deal with one of y'all because I mean, like that's the reason why we had stickers on our albums. Yeah. Um, record labels didn't want to take a, they didn't want to take accountability, uh, but they want to make money, but. Um, they ain't want to take accountability if you talk about nigga, fuck this nigga, or right. I'm gonna come through doing this, or <laughs> this. So whatever he's saying, that's his own motherfucking thoughts. We ain't got nothing. We gonna exploit this motherfucker and put it out mm. and make some money, but we ain't gonna take responsibility for yeah, it. They, they didn't want to take responsibility for you. So you thriving out here though. You doing your thing, right? To a certain degree, you know, to a certain degree, and yeah, it's hard. I, I ain't never really. We didn't. We didn't. It didn't get to where it was just. You know, it been a grind. Pretty much the whole ride been a grind mm-hmm. for me, homie. You so know I, mean? I keep it funky. You right. already fucking with him. Y'all just made it um, official when y'all started strong arm steady, right? Because you was already fucking with all of them cats already. When did y'all decide we go get together and make this group? Um, I guess it was like two thousand two, three, four, right? Five era. That was the mixtape era. Remember when mm-hmm. everybody was doing them mixtape? Nigga right. go to the swap meet and buy all the mixtapes and shit. You got Dipset going crazy with the mixtapes and G Unit mixtapes. We basically started a a mixtape group called Strong Arm Steady, and it was basically all the niggas that was in that little crew over there. This was just a brand. It was a brand basically, mm-hmm. and um, everybody pretty much that was on the mixtapes either had deals, was signed, was here there. But me, crying the Field wasn't signed, so when Exhibit went on tour, he would take Cron Don, and then he started taking Cron and Field, and then he started taking me. Me, my position over there was like, um, I came in the game with Sir, Sir, Sir Jinx via the big homie Reese from Dago, Dago via DJ Jam. Okay. The homie Reese got out the pen. He told DJ Jam, um, what's up, Jam? I'm trying to get in the game. I got a few artists. Jam was probably touring with Snoop or Dre or Dog, whoever at the time. Mm-hmm. He said, homie, I'm going to turn you on to Jinx. Shit around like maybe like 99 or something. We start, no, 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 no. Probably like 99, we start fucking with Jinx. Up at, coming up to L.A., fucking with Jinx. And um, from that, um, he was working on Exhibit's first album. Mm. I'm no, no, no. Second album, Forty Days and Forty Nights. That's when I started coming around. So I was Jinx just did do a lot of joints on that album. Yeah, I was just in the movement where what was going on via Reese, and Reese was with Exhibit right hand nigga. So by default, you know, shit. I kind of just fell fell in f- family. It wasn't like right. no chosen because a nigga just love how I'm rapping or some shit like that. It was just part of the crew, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't rapping like nobody that was in that circle, homie. I'm rapping like this nigga right here, you feel me? That's how I'm yeah, feeling, you But you know, me? that's what made it so oh, dope, shit. dog. You know it, what I mean? It put a little twist on it, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, and at that time, man, when y'all started Strong Arm Steady, Exhibit, it came off some big ass records. Yeah. Like, like he had a cracking at that time. Mm-hmm. Did you ever think that, okay, I'm about to get up in this building now. Hell yeah. Every fucking day. I woke up. Mm-hmm. Every day. That's what it was all about. But um, I just think it's other things beyond talent. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'd have had, an, if I'd have had anybody that was a rep for me, 
mm-hmm. that was just an average level level representative. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cause I'm I don't know one of these niggas that just rapped, paid for their own shit, and then just walked up to Interscope and Interscope gave him five hundred. Th- I don't know who did. I don't know who did. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know. You had to. Um, you know what I'm saying? You had to have some kind of. Uh, yeah. Some kind of rep is black. I never had a manager right. slap, but I had an attorney right. who, when it came down to negotiating deals or whatever, like um, I got signed to Epic because I went through a techno hop. You get me mm-hmm. as a as a small independent label. I went through techno hop, and then fortunately, when the shit got to cracking. Um, Techno Hop was able to walk over there and go, hey, see, I got eight. I got Compton's Most Wanted. Uh, I had Ice T. Mm. I had King T. So right then and there, they was like, oh, well, shit, this gangster shit is getting cracking. Mm-hmm. So I went through via Techno Hop, via he got somebody, and bingo, they got a deal. But it was all a motherfucking circle, and I never, you get me? But I was just a motherfucker who, at the time, I just wanted to rap, you get me? I didn't know the technicalities and all that bullshit and publishing and managers and contracts and all that other shit. I was just a nigga who wanted to grab the mic and spit. I'm going to rap about the neighborhood, about what we go through as hood niggas. And so all those niggas take a piece of the pie and shit. And that's what's so fucked up at the end of the day. Because you the artist who writing and putting your heart and soul into your music. At the end of the day, you getting fucked. So uh, I I get it, you know, the representation. Because then there would have been somebody that's been able to go like... You know, I'm gonna go over here and talk to Atlantic, or I'm gonna go talk to motherfucking. We don't, we don't have that in Dak. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the cold part about it, not to cut you off, bro. I had to go all the way to New York to get. I didn't get my deal via here. We had to jump on the plane and go to New York. But what get. a lot of niggas don't know is that it's probably qualified management like a motherfucker out here. But they look at certain niggas. I'm like, well, they doing it already. I don't think they need my help. See, that was another part too. You feel what I'm saying? That's another part too. I, I I wasn't thinking when I used to be talking this independent shit. Mm-hmm. And niggas would interview me and all I would talk about is, yeah, I got my own label and I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm just doing that because that's what I'm seeing, you know, uh, uh, Master P and Cash Money. That's what they saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not really understanding. Like, nigga, you telling every, you, you telling every nigga that would want to give you a deal, nigga, that you straight. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that had a lot to do with it because the nigga was riding around here oh, yeah. looking like I was straight too, though, because niggas was outside getting to the bag exactly. and doing all yeah. this shit. So I'm basically, anybody that wanted, oh, he ain't going to sign. He, he, Even he, for eight, it's probably a big ass management company and the nigga in the building. I would love to have MC8, but like thinking, well, I'm sure he already has management and has this. Yeah, I didn't have no management. I, I, I was like, fuck, I used to tell niggas, man, what you what you need to call a manager for? Straight up. To negotiate what? Nigga, here I, I am. Who I call for your booking? Here I am right you here, You saying nigga. that to me, I be like, nigga, you want to phone I with a nigga? And then I got to give up 15% or some shit <laughs> like that for a nigga to go, yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> I, can, I can tell a nigga my <laughs> damn self. Yeah, 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 nigga, I'll be there. Or what? Pick me up at what time the flights land? Okay, you car go be right. with niggas, right? Man, you please, what you kill. man, please, nigga, you car. What, you kill. Man, what kind of car they driving? Straight up. Okay, what hotel I'm staying at? Straight up. Okay. Oh, nigga, we set. Send the motherfucking deposit, nigga, and we cracking. That's for real. All it's ever been for me, homie. It's all. This but sometimes been. I call it. Sometimes yo. Sometimes you need a buffer though. Yeah. Cause sometimes I don't feel like sitting on the phone with some niggas who want to be like, yeah, you know, uh, and you know, uh, we gonna do the radio shit, whoopty whoop, and then you know, I want him to go over here and do this and that, and then after he go to the hotel, we want to. I, I sometimes I don't want to go through all that, so it's some, it's sometimes it's beneficial to have a manager and shit to negotiate shit, but yeah, uh, you know, but they gotta eat what they kill, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got to eat what they kill. So you doing your thing, man. Did you ever get frustrated? 
I'm frustrated right now. Man. I'm frustrated the whole motherfucker. Say this shit, this shit still I goes got, on. I ain't really got to do, I ain't really got to do what I know I could do though. And I, I understand what it is and why. You know, it was a time I came in. Come on, bro. My first, what you figure when Trig came out, hey, you probably know very well because you was in the race already. Mm-hmm. But look at all the shit that was not going on at that time when I first came. Just think 2001, 2002, 2003. After Pac died, homie, shit, who came after that? It went, I'm going to tell you who came. It, shit, nigga, it went Pac, a little bit of Exhibit, and then it was Game, Kendrick. Just think of all them years. And then when did Kendrick come? To what? Like 2012, So you like figured, that. it's like three niggas for like 10 years. You had Snoop Dogg too. No, no, they already cracking. I'm talking about mm-hmm. who when I came out, like who made it? That's me in Glasses class. Yes, you know what? Who, that who, is who right. cracked during mm-hmm. that time? Because Glasses had a tremendous buzz, man. And it was almost like, it was almost at a time out here, if you didn't come off that Dr. Dre family tree, that, that MWA was, family tree, yeah. it was impossible. Well, shit, I, I, yeah, I mean, a lot of us uh, 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 that struggled from that from that aspect. After Pac, it was like everybody else didn't want to. They, all them West Coast niggas tripping. Biggie happened. Oh, it, it was yeah, like a lot of la- West Coast. They went a lot of labels uh, disassociated themselves with. Um, See, that's my class. West Coast music during that time. That was my class. Uh, I caught the beginning of it. Um, because at the end of my major label run, um, they were skeptical of fucking with our music. Yeah. Um, it was either you switched up the style or basically you got shelved or whatever. Um, yeah, with the Pac situation and with Death Row and then, you know, a lot of the a lot of the parent companies decide, like, we don't want to touch that shit. Um, it was hard to to get, you know. So this, they, is, this is when it was, I it was a long, to start rapping. Yeah, it was a long time. <laughs> yeah, you th- you, it was, you gotta look at that period between, like he said, between Pac dying and Biggie dying, West Coast music kind of like, because it was, our format, you get me? Our reputation was that type of music. Well, think about it, even still to this day, man. You get the young boy, man, what's it? Pop Smoke, come out here and get murdered. Oh, I yeah, mean, look, he is doing his thing, dog, and get murdered, right? Then you had the PB Rock Cat out here, he had a restaurant eating. He get killed, man. Well, that ain't, to me, that ain't got shit to do with hip hop. It just got to do with niggas is greedy. And yeah, niggas but you is know. hungry in these niggas been like that forever. And you don't hear about you you hear about the shit now because of the celebrity status of whatever. And the internet. You get me? But man, niggas been niggas been dying and getting killed and, and all that type of shit as far as getting jacked and, and getting set up and all that type of shit. Uh that's been going on since I started walking the streets. You get me? Um Nowadays, it's, it's, it's more easy, though, to set yourself up for some bullshit. You just, like I said, uh, you go to certain places, you got to know your surroundings and what you want. Um, I never went to nobody's town trying to floss and be, you know, extra with it. You, I'm not from here. I've never seen you do that. In I'm not day. from here. You no, get me? Everybody you got to respect everybody. Yeah, you got to respect everybody. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had somebody come down to Diego and just thought it was sweet? A lot of niggas came to San Diego and thought it was sweet. Yeah. But, you know, I... I, I Man, when it was treacherous, I knew it. I used to tell motherfucking the late, oh, no, we can't go there. San Diego was a place I used to be like, oh, no, we're not going down there. Them niggas down there is treacherous like a motherfucker. We didn't know rap. So all, all the same, and when I say we, I'm going to say the niggas right before I think my we, generation. We came down there once to do something, man. I'm talking about, nigga, I was like, oh, no, we can't go down there. I had to tell, I had to tell the, you know, 
motherfuckers who didn't know about shit because people thought like San Diego was tourist town. You know, you hear about the waterfront and all that shit. Nigga, please. I used to go down there with my cousin. No. So when I started rapping, and especially when we got to the the real like Compton's most wanted music to drive by type of shit hey, and the labels used to be like yeah we're gonna go down there and do an in store and woompy woomp I used to be like nah we're not going down there we're not oh, going man. down there you're not taking me down there with motherfucking I don't wanna talk about a lot of shit homie I, two I, motherfuckers I love, I love, I love all the homies you're not taking me down with myself and no motherfucking you're not taking me down there with no two white reps in the van and shit <laughs> And one motherfucking security good man, we gonna get ran up out of that motherfucker. Let me just say it like this, homie. Every artist done had an issue. All our favorite rappers done had issues in Dago. And what I'll say, it's not no Dago LA thing. It's that for so long, San Diego didn't know nothing about the rap shit. So when they see niggas as gang members, they would just look at it like that's just a gang, gang member. That ain't no rapper. Yeah, that's gang banging. And you then got you, have- the, you got that shit at home though. Mm-hmm. When I saw when I started rapping, uh, yeah, nigga, I had little videos and songs out and shit, but still, nigga was affiliated when I started rapping. So it was like. I can't go over there and sign no motherfucking he, autographs. He, he, to, the, to these Crips and Bloods, he's a Crip. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, I don't give a fuck about no rap <laughs> shit and no microphone so shit. So a lot of shit nigga, You don't get that bullshit up out of here. Nigga, you come walking up in here trying yeah. to sign some <laughs> autographs. <laughs> Easy. Easy. No, no, no. Don't see. You can't set it up like that. <laughs> no, you can't say who done got ran out of. I no, say, I don't say it like that. All I'm bad. saying is the hun- no. They 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 gang. Let's say it like this: many LA artists have gang banged against San Diego artists against gang bang. Now they say you said run out, big homie. I didn't I, say that. I don't mean it like that. No, but everybody, I mean, from Easy to Dog Pound to. You know, Mad Circle, uh, all the homies, because them was all active, real niggas. You know what I'm saying? You know who niggas never, they always, for some reason, niggas always like Dub and Dago. Yeah, Dub, Dub is a... Niggas always like yeah. Dub and Dago. I hear a lot of people say they like Dub, dog. I don't heard a lot of blood, blood cats say they like Dub. See? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't start performing in Dago until way, like, to once, like, you know... Niggas was cool, and you know you would see me and quick together. Shoop and them even got into it with homies in Dago, like on the on the up and smoke tour. It was, it was yeah. big, yeah. A lot of this shit happened, you know, before my generation of um being outside. You know what I'm saying? Like like you know when I was, you know, a lot of them early years. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Now it ain't the gang banging shit is a little different because everybody. Got a rapper now, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's exactly. so niggas ain't so like, you know, you might have a, a a rap group come to town three times a year that was some real actual gang members. Now you gonna see a nigga from every neighborhood come through Dago every weekend at one of these clubs. So it ain't so like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, everybody was, come through. Dago. It was just different back in the days, man. But it's the same everywhere. It ain't just Dago, nigga. Shit, niggas to go anywhere. Yeah. Niggas will go anywhere and need to be on. Shit. San Diego seemed Sit like shit in the motherfucker. That nigga was getting banged on everywhere he went on that song. You know, sit yeah. Denver and mm-hmm. here and everywhere. Nigga, I remember the nigga one of the first t- t- tours I went on. Nigga, some white Crips was banged on me hard. My whole set. Nigga, we was in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> the first was a little white yeah, Crips. Ar- yeah, no, 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 no. Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, yeah. Omaha, oh, and they, Nebraska. And they will do something to your ass, too. Yeah, man. You can get it anywhere. It ain't, it ain't no nigga. Yeah, that's why I said that's, that, was, that was one of the reasons why um, I never tried to uh, bang when it came to making music. Yeah, uh, man. You got you know, to niggas, it. Niggas get it by, you know, maybe you'll see something on the album cover or whatever, whatever. But we try to not... Push it on a motherfucker when it came to CM Dub Records. 
I'm just going to rap about how the hood took us under or niggas is struggling or, you know, niggas drove by Miss Daisy or something. I'm not going to tell you it was the Crips or the Bloods who did it. If you looked at the DNA of my rap shit, everything he's saying is just like, this is the drive-by. Drive-by, Miss. that's all that inspired me to do. You ain't getting to the question, homie. This nigga right here, this the nigga right here that made me want to do this shit. Oh, MCA, so, H, so yeah, I just said it a hundred times so in every you, interview. He already heard all this shit. So before. you was influenced, but it's a whole bunch of people. That's why they get mad. Why See, this nigga get mad at me when I be telling him what he mean to certain people, right? Yeah. He get mad at me, man. I'll be telling niggas that shit. I'm a regular nigga. I say, no, you not, my nigga. Nah, I yeah, I, I just be but like. But it's because he's a regular nigga. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what it was about eight. What it was about eight, you know who it was before eight, so I ain't gonna say no names and the artists and the rappers that everybody would. But the difference between him and them, not to be ignorant or on no bullshit, but this nigga was telling the stories of what I was doing and wanting to do. I knew that he was a real member. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was gangster rappers. Mm -hmm. I knew from his raps, this ain't glorifying you. No, this is just I'm hearing the stories that I want that, to, that, that's talking about what I'm doing. Yeah. That's what he was saying. It he was might he. not be mean mm -hmm. what he mean to me, to this rapper or that rapper or whatever, but for what I was doing, this is the nigga that was taught nigga jump in the gate, dope sack in my nuts, police on the trail, dogs barking, we getting away. This is the shit, you know what I'm saying, this nigga was talking about. And I knew that by the way he was telling them, you know what I'm saying, he's telling you the, how much dope is in the sack that's in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is real descriptive. I'm selling dope. No, this nigga, I got an eight ball. In the, the, yeah. you, you feel me? I knew that nigga really did the shit, and that's why I like this nigga. And I did, I did. I did a lot of. I did a lot of little bullshit when I was a fucking kid. I did a like. I, I did a lot of bullshit that. Um, if you grew up in a neighborhood mm -hmm. where they was gang banging, mm -hmm. and you affiliated or you got put on or jumped in or whatever it was, uh, that was life to to us. Um, we didn't see nothing else. Um, I didn't see shit else. When I woke up every morning, it was like, nigga, come pick me up. We go into the hood, and all day, it was just walking around the neighborhood seeing the experiences. We got jacked by the police. All Niggas that. came through blasting. We was in the alley selling dope. Nigga, we was hopping fences and hiding and, and carrying straps. Uh, nigga, we was rolling. Down with some niggas at we, the store. At the gas station, at oh. the hamburger stand, All whatever that. it was, you know. A mm -hmm. uh, couple of homies who lived in other neighborhoods, nigga, we go over there and got to get into it with them niggas because the homies live over there and they not it, it, it was just life to me and it wasn't like I was glorifying it but I was like shit while niggas is talking about being the freshest and the hardest MC and niggas was rapping about I'm this and I'm that I'm like nigga I'm finna talk about nigga what happened in the hood last night hey let me ask both of y'all this, this is a question for both of y'all do y'all think, man, that sometimes gang banging might have fucked up the music industry in LA? Not saying fucked it up, because this has been a lot of niggas that have got on, right? LA do got a very thriving music scene. Oh, I, what I would say is the downfall from gang banging and music is, is that it doesn't, uh, sometimes it keeps us uh, restricted from each other as far as uh, being able to show how much respect or how much uh, we really like fucking with a nigga or his music or whatever. I say it to this day. Um, niggas' ties and their affiliations is what keep us held down. Um, you know, yeah, I know that nigga. Oh, you know, y'all, you, you, you bumped my nigga Mitchie? Yeah. yeah, I bumped that nigga. He all right, yeah. you know. And that ain't because a nigga music ain't good. It's because of past affiliations and what niggas feel that they must hold true. You get me? Um, MCA got a show in L.A. Yeah, you know, but can I get in free? Or nigga, how many, you get me? That's how, I could, I could go to motherfucking Omaha, Nebraska and sell out every motherfucking ticket. Uh, here at home, I'm gonna have 30 niggas wanting to get in free. Yeah, you get me? Um, 
<laughs> I could have a bomb song and niggas in motherfucking Wisconsin gonna be like, oh nigga, that's the hardest shit. Or I like I just came from off tour overseas. You nigga, I could put out a record three months ago and it's it's five hundred motherfuckers in there singing that motherfucker word for word. Right. Mm. Over here, it's like he put out a record win. Mm. You get me? It's it's just and like I said, I, I I put that to because of the walks of life we come from. And niggas just won't live that down as far as just having, you know, that utmost respect for a nigga's craft. You get me? Uh, niggas let the affiliations in the past gang situations uh, kind of hinder uh, wanting to just respect the nigga. That's what make me just say, fuck it. I'm going to call up a nigga and be like, nigga, get down on my shit. You get me? Because a lot of niggas don't respect us for a lot of shit we've done. And like I said, and that's just because of neighborhood affiliations or past whatever, past beefs or he from here or I grew up with that nigga or I know that nigga or whatever, whatever. You know, you just can't get the same love sometime here. The way I feel about it is that's a deeper version of it, but a more simple version of it is now it's a little bit different, but times like recent past up until you know the recent past mm -hmm. you figure if you a blood rapper and you come out you automatically half your fan base is just gonna go like this if you're thinking about it from a perspective if you from the bay mm -hmm. if you from the bay the project right next to you might not like you because y'all funking but a nigga an hour away don't have no reason to not fuck with you. When you a blood, a nigga across the country will have a reason not to bump your music. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for the music to move the way it might move in the south because it might get to this hood, but then it might stop because the next hood over is crippled. So it ain't gonna just move steady. You feel me? Mm -hmm. If you're going by like an independent type of push like that, you know, you a blood, you ain't you ain't really getting no like 90s, 2000s, you ain't get who gonna where your shit gonna be bumping at in Long Beach? Oh man, you know, Long like, Beach ain't nowhere, ain't nobody in Long Beach. Where, where they going So you, so now just because you a blood, there's a whole city full of niggas that ain't really gonna fuck with your music. You feel me? That's the shit I look at when I think about. Now it ain't like no Long Beach niggas don't fuck with my music. I fuck with Long Beach niggas. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel what you're you saying. Feel me? You know, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I'll yeah, hell yeah, say. gang banging fuck with fuck with the music. That that just go for Southern Cali, period. I would say, man, for more than anything else, I've been in California since 1988. I, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, but I've been in California longer than most of my life now. Mm -hmm. I never banged because of that specific thing, because I had too many friends I met. You know, when you play football with people, they become like your brothers. Straight up. So if me messing with the homies from Long Beach Insane, Man, I can't hang out with the homies from that, that might be having to be from 20s. No more. I was like, man, I'm not getting involved in none of that shit. Right. Because it just fuck up everything to me. You know what I mean? It, it, like, it's silly almost. I'd be seeing cats find out they was cousins, but don't fuck with each other. Oh, yeah, you had a lot of that. You know it what I'm saying? No choice. It was, I wasn't in no situation where I got to pick none of that type of shit. Whether I want to bang or nothing like that. So it's a little different. Yeah, for y'all, it's a little different. See, when you come out somewhere and you 17, right? Right. Versus you being yeah, born it's, somewhere. Yeah, born, it's kind of it's kind of different, you know. You know? Yeah. It's kind of different if a motherfucker showed up off the Greyhound from Texas somewhere at, at 17, you know. Even uh, though it's been some active homies. Yeah, that they done, up they done, yeah, at 17. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But, uh. The choices are, you know, a little different than yeah. you growing up in the hood and you're being expected at a certain age to, you know, you're going to be coming to walk through here every day and not, nigga, it's time to start being affiliated. So where you from? You either from over here or you from somewhere else. Yeah, but you know, you want to hear some crazy shit though, right? One thing about living alone, Beach, you taught me this, is that it's always a blood nigga there, right? <laughs> it was a nigga on the team. He was a blood. Went to Jordan High School, went to Long Beach City College, and Jordan High School is a crip school. It's in North Long Beach, right? Mm -hmm. So they should like to take me out every weekend. You know I'm an out of town nigga, right? So he took me, he said, we gonna go to my neighborhood. And I never knew, we went down to Wilmington, the waterfront Piru. I get mm -hmm. out the car, 
And they hit him up like, what's up, man? They look at me like this, because he's like, this is the homie play with me. So they figure I'm a Long Beach nigga. Mm -hmm. It's all these big ass Polynesians like, where you from? Where you from, blood? Oh, that's in Wilmington. Where yeah. you from, blood? And they thought, they, I said Ohio. That was my first time out there. Them niggas start laughing. They said, hell, you trying to be funny or something? Yeah, because that, that's how a nigga cop out. He hit him in the Oh, nigga, I'm from, I'm from Texas or some he shit. Said, he said, you trying to play with me or something? And the homie said, man, he's fool really from Ohio. They start laughing. They said, man, I thought you Long Beach, so I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on. But it made me realize, I said, man, I fuck with too many people, man, because it was blood niggas on the team. It was niggas from this side. And then once you figure out the dynamic that it's more motherfucking Crips than whack Crips, that don't like crib games, it, it, it throw you for a loop even further. I'm like, man, how do you, what kind of games, like what kind of Yeah, it, can, it confuse you if you're out of town and you Yeah, just, I was yeah, confused as a motherfucker, girl. I said, so, so let me get this straight. Bloods kill bloods too, and Crips still kill Crips. Niggas kill niggas, homie. Yeah, that's niggas what it is. Niggas. Yeah, niggas kill niggas. Shit. They ain't got shit to do with blood and the cripping, nigga. Just niggas kill niggas, man. Niggas always, when, when I, you know, you, you get somebody that ain't from inside talking about they k killing over colors. I, man, I ain't, it ain't never been about no colors. It ain't, I ain't, ain't no, it be about some other shit, but that'd be the last thing it'd be about. It'd be about some bitches or something before it'd be about. Yeah, I colors. tried to, yeah, that's what I try to explain to a lot of people, uh, you know, who listen to my music, who get confused because, that's the simplicity that they want to push. Oh, you niggas is uh, dying over a red rag or a blue rag. And I try to tell niggas it's more deeper than that. It, it's, it, it, it's more deeper because of the, the, the foundation of what it really is. And it's not about colors and shit. I mean, everybody motherfucking associates themselves with something. Football teams associate themselves with colors uh, and logos, sign and everything. To you know, all kind of shit. So, um, but it's never that. You know Man, what I'm saying? I tell you one thing, bro. Poverty a motherfucker. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely. You know, poverty when you brought up with nothing, and, and that's and see, poverty is so universal. If you notice anywhere where they have poverty, they have what a high crime rate. They have a high murder rate because people don't have no hope. Think about you. Think about you. Got you a talent, man. That yeah, even though it may not be the career that you necessarily wanted, it yeah. took you a lot of places, right? You've been able to make a living for yourself and your family, right? Think about the nigga that don't have no options. That's just stuck in the hood, right? He can't do nothing. He can't rap. He can't play no football, no basketball. Yeah. All he and, uh, know is that. That's a lot of the homies that's lost. A lot of the homies that we got buried or a lot of the homies that we got doing life in the pen right now because he got no choices. They don't have no choice. got no fucking choice. You get They don't me? have no choice in the dope game. See, we had this, this illusion back in the 80s and 90s, man, that the dope game was like the the savior for the neighborhood. I don't know nobody that made it out, dog. Everybody I know that was a big baller, like they had the big cribs, dog, and all the cars and stuff, most of them dudes is either still in prison, dead, smoked out. They just, it, it, it wasn't no one. Um, it's got to be one, homie. No, it, listen. It ain't, one, it ain't one out there. It's one somewhere, no, ain't it, homie? I was going to say, you it's know. Right. You it's, got some, the, one, it's one somewhere. You got the some one, success story. Right. You got to have you, one you, success you story. One, you got the one that got away. And I'm talking about dudes that did on a high level, though. I'm talking about extremely yeah, high yeah. level, right? Yeah. You got the cat that made, got out of it, man, but he's still mentally scarred from it, right? He lost sure. more, way more than what he gained from yeah. it. You feel what I mean? That was the biggest lie ever in society, man, because it had, cause it had people thinking we made it, man, but we tore up a whole community. Man. And I'm gonna have to say we, cause I was actively involved. Well, we got a lot, we, 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 got, we got success stories. Uh, myself, Mitchy, you. Oh yeah, uh, but that's what I'm saying. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of us who came from uh, walking from the wrong side of the tracks and like I tell motherfuckers today, I wouldn't change it for nothing because um, it makes you who you are and it makes you understand shit. Um, you know, without gang banging and without growing up in the hood, going through poverty and all of that, it wouldn't have made me who I am with my kid. You feel me? Uh, 
to be able to get, uh, you know, especially with a young man, being able to turn him away from and let him see that there's bright shit other, it's, it's, a, it's a brighter light at the tunnel other than what we had to go through. You know, we didn't have too many choices. You feel me? Uh, growing up in the 80s and the early 90s, I didn't have too many choices, man. Um, my parents tried to give a nigga a positive light. But, and, and you where know, was the trainers back then? They, yeah, Remember exactly. the trainers and yeah, shit? Niggas ain't had no trainers and yeah, all that dog. shit. You ain't got a lot of shit that wasn't available to us. So you just had to make a way. And for us to be sitting here today and not six feet under or, you know, locked down in the pen looking at another 50. Free the homies. Before, free the homies. You get me? So we, we, are, we are the success stories of the regular. You get me? We might not be sitting up with, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars and, you know, private yachts and shit, but this is the success of a regular or, or regular nigga from the neighborhood who a lot of motherfuckers probably thought wouldn't make it out of the situation. You get me? A lot of the homies died before we wasn't even teenagers no more. Homie. Yeah, and a lot of homies didn't, you know, grab microphones or do beats or none of that shit. So we try to be the uh, the success story for those niggas. You feel me? Yeah, because a whole bunch of people that didn't make it, man. So right about now, man, the music scene is real weird, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um... I've just been, you know, surveying the landscape, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing these little cats, man, get deals for having TikTok videos, for popping TikTok videos, having mm -hmm. people doing their challenges and stuff like that, man. Mm -hmm. Where does a, um, a person that come from that era, man, and where you really had to rap and really where this stuff meant a whole lot and really where we had more bodies of work. Like today is a real single driven era, right? Mm -hmm. To where it's like a cat like you, MC8, Scarface, y'all ain't never been them single type of dudes. You gotta listen to the whole body of work to get the story. You know, Straight you feel up. what I'm saying? Maximum yeah. effect. Where do you fit in that in this landscape? Right now, from what I'm noticing, and I could be wrong in the intel that I'm grabbing, the game is kind of changing right now. And you're starting to see cats that actually do make music from that angle, starting to either step step back into the game or 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 like a lot of the G's, if you notice, man, a lot of the G's been coming back out and putting out records, man. And um even getting deals, like a lot of niggas, like a lot mm. of the main niggas, I mean I know I know everybody know this, but like we can't overlook the fact that, you know, Big Mike did just win uh, Grammy for best hip hop album or whatever that you know, was. Yeah, Killer Mike did Killer his Mike, thing. My bad, and I, yeah, I personally Mike know the thing. homie. I yeah. my that's, bad. That's the homie. Killer, Killer Mike, Mike, straight yeah, up. Killer guy. Mike, my nigga. Shout out to the homie Stacker Griff. Stacker Griff from from uh, from my neighborhood out in Atlanta kind of helped me and um, Killer Mike make our little relationship we got. But salute to the to the homie, and that ain't nothing that, that we can't notice. I think the game is kind of changing right now. No disrespect to the young artists that didn't make music, but some of the um, Fans that was just following along, listening to a lot of the different music because it wasn't, they, they, they starting to be able to step back and find a lot of their favorite artists right now making music mm -hmm. and shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, homie even put me on mm -hmm. record, you know, a couple of his records recently, homie, and I know, I know it's niggas that appreciate that a nigga like A putting out records again, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Straight up. I don't think, I think that's the thing. I think it's important that cats continue to put out records because you got to think about it like now, right now. We in the era of the 50-year-old B-boy. Straight up, homie. You know the way you you see cats, our 50 years old ain't like our parents 50 years old. You remember while we was little kids, you see a nigga that's 50, he got on a collar shirt. Now you know, you see 50 niggas, you know, niggas dress fresh. You know what I mean? They, they a product of the hip hop environment. They grew up mm -hmm. on hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So what they go listen to, I know me, I'm not, I'm not checking for no, um, it's a rep bag I heard the other day, man, where they took the Door of the Explorer song and made a hook out of it. Talk about backpack, backpack. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna and, speak and on I, that. I, but I can't listen to that as a grown ass man, man. man I, I, I just think that this era, um, you know, uh, it comes quick and it is here today, gone tomorrow uh, type of era where. Um, Everybody rapping, but nobody's really making songs. Yeah. That's, I think that's the difference between our era and what it is today. Um, 
Today is catchy, it's hooky, it's gimmicky, and then a week from now, it's like, what's next? You I'm going to tell you what it is, bro. And, and I could put out a song and motherfucker banging that shit for the next three years, you get me? As opposed to you could put out a song today and the motherfucker bang it over the next week. And then now it's like, okay, what's next? So Yeah, this ain't, you know, and this ain't no knock against nobody, man, but... I like some of them records, you know what I mean? Like I thought the old homie OT Genesis was jamming, but it's the that's the problem right there, so to speak. You feel what I mean? OT Genesis make great songs, but they just great for that moment right there. It ain't no body of work attached to it. You feel what I mean? And it could be. Maybe he got that, maybe he don't. But this era has gotten so where to where it's it's almost it's crazy now. Mm. Cause you see cats trying, they'll do anything. Yeah, I don't think motherfuckers want to make songs today. I think they just want to make what's catchy, what's gimmicky, and what's, you know, what can give me a million, billion downloads right now. And a month from now, if don't nobody ever want to hear that shit again, oh well. But hey, you, you know, know, one positive about them little motherfuckers making some bread. You know what it is? I think, homie, the little artists now, I ain't knocking their music, never knocking them. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times now, a lot of the streams and a lot of the shit that they getting is coming from shit other than their music. So therefore, the music don't last because the song wasn't even hot because of the music. The song was kind of hot because of something else that this artist did in his yeah. life, you know, because they do a lot of other things that get popular now. You feel me? That ain't got nothing to do the with the song music. The song is almost like just the um, afterthought. Yeah, this is who he fucking with or... You know, what is this murder trial saying and, what, what, and all that shit? Yeah, what controversy, conflict, or conspiracy? And so that's the reason why his song will be popping. That's the reason why you see all these people pop with music after they've done something else, have some other career that made them popular, whether it be a, a reality show or or or, or was in, fucked with this broad or in this movie or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Then he gets his career with rap because he already got he already popular. Yeah, the way I look at it with this man is rap is almost like a calling card and a way to do some other shit. We live in an era right now that's so dope, right? Think about this. We can go shoot a movie next week and put it out. Straight up. You feel what I'm saying? So it's so much stuff that we can do. Like I look at these young cats and they hustle, and I ain't gonna lie, I'm say what man shit. We need to be diversifying our hustles too, shit. Man, Damn it. You know, we I was talking to you earlier this week. I was like, man, we gotta get Getting the cameras cracking, dog. Get you behind that camera. We shot get... some movies. We did a few movies, homie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did a few movies. You got to check them. Did you, you check that out? Remember I told you about yeah, the movie? Yeah, Baby I did. Baby Gangster. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But that's what I'm saying, man. You Shout in the air right homie, now. West Bread Diamond, homie. And homie put together a called, called movie. Hey, you got to check it out, homie. We did a movie. It's on... Um, it's on um, Amazon Prime right now. Started. Sling Johnson was in the movie. Okay. Uh, uh, me, Compton Menace. Uh, it was a few a few artists. Compton Men has been getting a lot of shit lately. Man, that nigga that nigga did that role, homie. He lit it up and in, in, in uh, what is that? Uh, straight out of Compton, homie. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? yeah, he lit that OG two tone. Yeah, he did that. Man, you know who one of the greatest actor rappers of all time though? Don't don't let because because I'm a I'm, I really studied this shit. Man, homie, who who homie? This man sitting right at the end of the table. Oh, man, man. A played the motherfucker. A played the motherfucking shit out there. I will tell y'all niggas about this nigga right hey, here. Hey, no man. homie, what are you talking about, my nigga? That, <laughs> that shit that was, was the so shit right cold. there. That shit was epic, right Come there. Come on, niggas. <laughs> Come on, niggas. You need yeah. some help, homie? We're gonna go over here and this little more. I don't give a fuck who out there, goddamn. Hey, play you damn niggas. niggas. And I didn't know H mm -hmm. No, you I did that, that, my nigga. No, no. After seeing that movie, I said, man, this nigga's probably the most gang banging this nigga in the world. Nah, bro. homie. I'm listen, listen, homie. I went listen in the hood, bro. Listen, it's a school in, in our hood, right in the middle. On Skyline and 61st Street, when we was young, it was a creative and performing arts school. Nanda Lewis went there. Nick Cannon went to, a lot, 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 lot of actors and entertainers went to this school, homie. Um, we studied, homie, how to do, you know, it was in the hood, so you wanted to go to the school because all little brawls was running around in leotards and shit. It was like fame. Mm -hmm. But for the street niggas, we would just take, as our elected, would just be, you know, drama or acting or something, mm -hmm. you know, go make little skits in class and shit. Mm -hmm. but, so I learned shit and I know shit. The, the homie got it off. You feel me? The homie did that. I thought you was gonna say like, uh, like, uh, 
Because you know Pac could act, homie. I mean, oh, we no, know Pac. We know he could act, but I'm saying, I'm saying from a nigga that, no, not just because he said it and he went to school. You know, he did his thing. He was believable, homie, real believable. No, Pac, mm-hmm. he was a good actor. He was a really good Definitely. actor. You know, um, mm-hmm. which is why he was such a good hip hop artist. Straight you up. know what I'm saying? He was able to get that shit off. You Straight know what up. I mean? Straight up. You know, that motherfucker, you thought he, you know, he's meant business when he said what he said. Um, mm-hmm. The reason I say that, man, is because you got some rappers who aren't good actors. No, not at all. You know all. what I'm saying? Eight, eight pulled that shit off, dog. He did that. And I think Eight, by me knowing him a little bit now, I know why. I used to always wonder why he didn't do more movies. That motherfucker probably turned down more shit. Mm-hmm. Just from where he was at, you know, he, that's what this rap shit mean to him. He's like, ain't nobody gonna try to make me know no comedian, you know, no, 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 uh, mm-hmm. no cartoon character. Mm-hmm. He wasn't having it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he pretty much probably sacrificed his. Uh, Come on, niggas. His film here, dog. <laughs> Just not wanting to do certain shit, you know. Yeah, yeah and, man, and I he busted. Yeah, I didn't want to do a lot of funny shit. I didn't want to do a lot of niggas was hitting me about funny shit and scripts yeah, about nah. comedy shit, and I was like, Nah, man, I'm cool. So that's what really did it for me. Hey, check it out, hey. Tell me this right here about minutes, right? Remember when you hit the nigga at the end at the shop, right? Mm-hmm. Did y'all make it a point to make sure that y'all busted 10 times? Because that you, you shot him 10 times. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it was a Desert Eagle, and the Desert Eagle held 10 bullets. Yeah, it held. It held um, I said, ooh, they had him. When they the gave me the, uh, when they gave it to me, uh, like, uh, when they gave me the gun earlier that day, mm-hmm. you know, before we was getting ready to shoot the scene, mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck is this? Because they had just came out with Desert, Desert Eagles. Eagles. And I said, what the fuck is this? He said, <laughs> and so the gun dude was like, oh yeah, I just got that. He was like, it's a Desert Eagle 357. <laughs> and I said, where the fuck y'all get this shit from? So I was just fucking with it all day. So they didn't really tell me uh, how many times to shoot the nigga. Uh, a lot of my shit was ad-libbed. Um, I guess because, you know, uh, having the true uh, affiliation with the neighborhood and gang banging and all that. So they didn't know. So it was basically on instinct or whatever I felt. Right. So when the nigga got out the car and I shot him twice, bop, bop, and he fell, I was just like, man, this nigga still moving around and shit, nigga, in the neighborhood. If ain't nobody, we just going to, I'm just going to keep shooting the nigga until it's over with. So I just kept dumping. Bing, 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 bing. The authenticity of that movie, that just added on to that because I knew, like, ooh, I was dying to get one of them at the time. Oh, nigga, as soon as I left that motherfucker, the next next motherfucking week, nigga, I was, nigga, had one of them motherfuckers. It was 1,400, huh? It was 1,400. It was about, yeah. Yeah, that motherfucker about 1,415. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that eagle. That motherfucker was beautiful, too. It was sick. That motherfucker was big as a motherfucker, and that big-ass barrel on the end. It just sounded like pure metal when you cocked it. Clean, clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that part of that movie. I loved a lot of that movie, but that that right there, I was like, because that made me, I was like, oh, the director is gangster as a motherfucker. He made sure it was 10 shots, too. Oh, no, I... I Al- Alan and Albert was cool, but a lot of my role, um, I got to improvise. You get me? Because uh, niggas was actors. You get me? Lorenz was actor. Tyron was an actor. Um, Jada was an actor. Um, and 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 the other niggas like too short or whatever. Cool. They, you know, it was it was it was a lot of less role because we don't want to take away some of the authenticity from niggas being street affiliated. Right. Mm-hmm. So when it came down to shit that I either had, because you know I had a lot of lines and a lot of shit. So when it came down to even shit as simple as wardrobe. Oh yeah. I'd be like, niggas don't wear that type of shit. And niggas don't wear that. So you know, most of the time I would just wear my own shit. I wear my own shit and I just try to. Wardrobe th- is everything. I just man. try, yeah, definitely. When it comes to some West Coast shit. Man, how you, motherfuckers, how you. Shows out right yeah. now that's supposed to be West Coast shows, homie. Mm-hmm. 
and I really can't get into them all the way. I ain't gonna say the name of the show, but Man, I really can't so get it. Let me know so I don't watch that shit. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. He said, nah, I ain't gonna put them on blast. But it's the wardrobe, because yeah. wardrobe is it's everything. everything yeah, yeah. The way you dress, what you affiliated with, what you trying to represent. Um, that all can tell in the pattern of your clothing. You Straight get up. me? Uh, you supposed to be a hood nigga from L.A. or Compton or the streets, period. And you West Coast, Southern California, San Diego. There's certain shit you ain't gonna have certain on. certain shit you ain't gonna have certain... You can't do no West Coast movie and the nigga got on Tim's. You, you just exactly. can't Exactly. Definitely, definitely. Even though niggas wear Tim's, you know, he's there. Definitely. You can't put on no niggas. Tim's and try to confuse it with it's a... It's like, you know who did a good job? Shit. You know who did a good job? And I'm gonna tell you why they did a good job. Look at that. Snowfall did an excellent job, for the most part, of making sure that motherfuckers stayed on point. But I'm gonna tell you why that was, because they had Dub C out there. You know, he was on the set, making sure a lot of that stuff was on point. Especially when you talk about from the point that Jerome is not a, the dude that played Uncle Jerome wasn't even from out here, dog. He's not from out there, he's from Brooklyn somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he played the hell out that part. Man, I could tell he's from Brooklyn, homie. You could tell. You yeah. don't think? You don't think? I think, think you just giving him a hard time, nah, mix. Mm -hmm. Uncle Jerome didn't seem right to you. Uncle Jerome didn't seem like no crit. I don't think he Did was he supposed like to he, be. How he go on the West Coast and he ain't supposed to be no crit? Well, he was a nigga. They say he was a Texas nigga originally. Okay, so that's the storyline. He was originally a Texas. Oh, okay, nigga. there you go. That's what. Okay, but there if you, you look at the '80s, that's all. It was a bunch of big country motherfuckers out here in the '80s. If you mm -hmm. remember, oh definitely. You just come from okay. the down, just come from the south. Okay. That was the early if he on. To be from Texas, I get it. They, they make the early on. The world. You know, he was the early on dudes. You know, the, yeah, the big no burly doubt. dude. No doubt. Yeah, you kind of gave me a look in that. You didn't think they did a good job? No, no, no. I was just a, si a situation like that. Like, if see, if I'm doing the casting and I'm doing the wardrobe, and it's on the West Coast, mm -hmm. it's, we gonna, come on, man, we're going to at least pe see one pair of K-Swiss or something in the 80s, my nigga. You feel yeah. me? We're going to see some K-Swiss. We're going to see some motherfucking... Um, we're going to see some I think what they overdo with that is with the Chuck Taylors and stuff. The over Chucks and shit. Yeah, because I be I ain't going to lie. When I came out here in 88, niggas wasn't walking around. Niggas just wearing, wearing feelers, niggas, niggas wearing, sneakers and shit like that. Niggas was wearing Jordans. Niggas was Jays. wearing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They was wearing K-Swiss. They was wearing Adidas. Gang bangers wear Chuck Taylors. Like gang, active gang bangers, not gang members. Gang bangers wear Chuck Taylors. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah, niggas and even, money having thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Niggas wearing some, you know, some Elise and some Sergio Tacchini's and some. Man, I saw Elise more. I saw more Fila. Fila's straight up. Um, what's the little silk shirts they had? The little, that, it, was, it wasn't no name. It was just the silk shirts. Little silk shirts, man. Turkish chain and silk shirts. Mm -hmm. Remember the sideways corduroy mm -hmm. this way. The cross cords, yep. yeah. <laughs> the cross court. That's where I guess, man, where I was at, everybody was ballers on the team. That's everybody wore a cross court, cross man, court. at least, feelers. All that. Everybody was draped up, you know what I mean? That was the era, homie. Mm -hmm. Everybody had money. Everybody had money back then, man. I was a young <clears throat> nigga, but I, I, I saw it. So, I man. I was in, but I saw it. I before we get up out of here, man, mm -hmm. what's on the agenda, man? Man, I got, I got a gang of shit going on right now. First and foremost, what I'm doing every day right now. I got a clothing line I started. Everybody got a clothing line, but I'm making some quality shit for street niggas on me, West Coast street niggas. And I say that because it's different fits and different shit everywhere. A lot of these niggas Definitely. trying to fit into, you know, European fashion. I, I ain't doing that. I got a, I got a line that's specifically for niggas like me and the homies, you know. The shit you, you got like something to, that big niggas can wear? I, 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 I make sure I have big nigga shit. What you wear, homie? Three, four? Three, three X, man, certain shit for us. But I, on, I, that's what we need because I go in the store to buy a certain shit. I already know that. And all they got for us is polos, man. That shit's so disrespectful, I dog. I make sure I make fours and five. I even got shit in five X's in my, in my life. That's good, a lot man. Of homies, mm -hmm. big homies. But uh, yeah, it's called Triv, where I live. You can go to trivwildlive.com and, and we, we hustling right there. I mean, I'm going to turn that shit into something major. And I'm gonna make sure I have something for the show too, you know what I'm saying? So the homies can have it. Oh, for and sure. And I'm man. working on music too, man. Like I got a lot a few projects coming out. I've been doing like a lot of specialty projects. I just dropped an album last year with a uh, Servette that I know. And um, mm -hmm. and, he and eight did a single on the group album. He a hard ass producer from Fresno and shit. Hard as fuck. And um no, 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 wait, wait. Servette is from um 
And what's Cervet? Cervet from um, he from he right there by Fresno. But anyway, um, we did an album called um, called um, Everybody Hates Mitch. Had some slaps on there. Had Fody mm-hmm. on there. Had uh, Jay Worthy on that thing. Shout out to the homies, Fody and Jay Worthy for for, for rocking that for me. Jay Worthy, man, I saw that boy come up, man. Oh yeah, man, he's still on the come up. He, I got a new. Uh, we got he got a new single out right now. I'm on. Uh, see. See, yeah. he gonna keep a G. Yeah, that's my yeah, Where that's my little dude right yeah, there. Good nigga, man. My yeah, nigga that's P. My, guy my right nigga there. P. Dude. My nigga P. Keep it moving. Mm-hmm. He a, he a good cat, man. Straight up, homie. He wanted he wanted he wanted the thoroughest. When I mean that, I mean like a real homie type shit. Mm. Ain't okay. trying to stick to that uh, old school format. He, he loved the old school he format. He loved it and he, and he show homage to it. Mm-hmm. Ninety six, ninety five. He loves that era. He shows homage to that, and um. Yeah, he was on that album. And then I got an album I'm finna put out right now. This is just straight gutter Mitchie Slick shit for all the people that might have forgot I got it fucked up. It's called Selective Politicking. Mm. And um, it's just the rawest, sound like some trigger racing station shit damn near, you know what I mean? That's all, you be coming up with some titles, man. But that's my, my whole thing the whole time being concepts, you know what I'm saying? Just concepts with the, the shit I'm talking about on the song. The the, 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 the the shit the, the it's, it's concepts with me. I try to urban talk about Urban survival shit. syndrome. The way I learned it, that you know, urban survival syndrome is a real um, is a defense plea. That it's, it's, it's supposed to be a clinically uh, um, um, a, a clinical condition that's been diagnosed and and, and 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 said to be had by young cats in the street that basically. Basically, like a fight or flight type of uh, type of mental condition to where when you see a nigga walking down the street, you don't think, "Oh, there goes another brother." Right. No, you think, "Shit, what this? Who this nigga?" Mm-hmm. Automatically think that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's a condition we all have coming from what we have. It's, it's connected mm-hmm. to PTSD and shit. And um, shit, yeah, man. I did that with Mugs, that album. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did an album, me and Mugs, the Urban Survival Syndrome. That was like 2008. Shout out to the homie DJ Mugs. We also working on some shit now. I've been, I've been getting my little here and there everywhere. I'm working with the few Mike and Keys. You know, Mike and Keys that did mm-hmm. all uh, uh, Nipsey shit. We working right now. We just did like three songs to start our project the other day. I'm all over the place right now. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, 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 I don't do this shit cause I got to. I do this shit cause I, cause um, I'm just a competitive nigga that like people to hear what I what I made and shit like that. And uh, you know, if it land on on some masses at this time in my career, that's cool too. But if it don't shit, I ain't tripping. Just just that's as long as dope, I'm repping man. for my t- city. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's dope as hell, man. I know Mac Ten a big fan. That's my nigga, man. Shout out to Mac Ten. Mac Ten had me come out on that uh on that uh that West Coast Mm-hmm. Uh, shit, man, I was giant, homie. Yeah, that turned out real big. Ooh, man. that was jumbo, man. That, that was a blessing. Big eight was there. Man, that was a mm-hmm. blessing, homie. Mac turned out, Mac did the medley at the end, man. On, man. And all them records. I didn't realize Mac had that many records. And I ain't man. never got to perform. That that was my that's the first time eight I ever really performed for a group of fa- of, of fans of what I really do the most. Exactly. Like all the real niggas was at, at that show, homie. That, I just want to thank the homie Mac for that opportunity, homie. You know what I'm saying? And shit, that was a good look for me. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was, man. Mm-hmm. Well, man, we I know we don't have y'all in here for a minute tonight, but this was one of those ones, man. Mm-hmm. We appreciate y'all checking in with us, man. Make sure y'all leave us that five-star rating, man, on um, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to the show at, and we out of here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Thanks, baby. Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Extra chronic, this is not.